All right, folks, we're getting started here. How's everyone doing? Get all the cameras set up here. Shout out to a couple of people, Urban Angler. Gotta love them. Great t-shirts, good people. Uh, so tonight we're going to be uh, tying a couple of different flies. Uh, some fox squirrel nymphs and uh, some uh, Latorte hopper. So we should be good. Um, we'll give it another minute or so to get started. A couple other uh, shameless plugs for people. It's a nice beer, Gunsmith, Golden Lining Ale, or Grainsmith, sorry. It's good. Just found it. It's a local beer from here in Virginia somewhere. Is it Crozet, Virginia, Crozet, Virginia? I'm not sure where that is, but it's good. Ah, glad to hear Bill is fishing. That's always a good excuse for missing one of these. So let's get, uh, we'll get started. So we're going to start with the, the Whitlock's Red Fox Squirrel Nymph. Um, so that you know, there are probably close to 100 variations of this nymph. It, it's, think of it as a clouser or a deceiver. You can do whatever you want with it. Lead eyes, beads, uh, no beads, etc. caddis. Uh, damselfly, dragonfly, stonefly, mayfly, you name it, burrowing, crawler, swimming, you can do it all. Um, you just change your proportions, change some stuff, add rubber legs, take rubber legs away. Um, tonight, uh, I'm going to be tying it on a, a European jig hook, just because I've gotten into fishing them a lot lately. Um, down here, I'm fishing for a lot more bass and gills and, uh, and you know, and brook trout and stuff. So I'm just... I've always fished barbless, but I'm tired of crimping my barb. So here's the hook I'm using. It's a uh, H480BL from Hannock. They make fantastic hooks. They are super strong. I've never bent one of those. And then um, I still buy my tungsten beads from Rip Lips. Um, they're the best value I've seen, even at wholesale. These guys beat you know my wholesale price. Um, and they come in 100 packs. I think that's why they do it. Now, I will tell you, you know, if you call up and order six or eight hundred packs and, you know, all the sizes, you'll have somewhere in there five that just won't fit on the hook. The, ho the holes will be closed up, something. Um, if that really bothers you, then, uh, you know, stick with Wapsie or Nature Spirit or whomever you uh, get your normal stuff from. So I've got the, the bead already on here. The uh, ingredients for Whitlock's Fox Squirrel Nymph. The, there's only a few things that I'll say that are super critically important with this. Uh, one... Blend your own dubbing. We're going to go over that. Danville Orange Thread. It's color number seven on their website and their color pattern. But it's, to me, it's, it, it really does make this fly. It gives it a shine. Um, orange Flashaboo. You can use gold wire if you want. Um, it is more durable. But uh, you'll see there's a, a quality to this that's uh, hard to beat. Then um, you can buy these. Blends, um, you know, this is the, the thorax, here's the abdomen, um, and they're okay. They have some natural fur in them, but to me, if you look, there's a lot of sparkle in there, and that's too much for me. I blend my own, and all I do is, is sorry for the shaky camera, I take my rabbit, or my uh, pint, uh, fox squirrel, trim the bellies, trim a section of the back, and blend it, um, we can go over how I blend at some other point in time. We'll do a, maybe a dubbing blending class. Um, I use an air canister and a zip, gallon Ziploc bag. And, but when, uh, and I've done it for the club before, but if you look at this dubbing, there's some sparkle in there, but not a tremendous amount. I don't want a, I don't want a super, super sparkly nymph. You know, and here's the abdomen. Same thing, there's some sparkle in there, but not a, a tremendous amount. Um, that's just my personal preference. Um, if you want to add rubber legs and I would say, uh, anything over a size, you know, size 12 and larger rubber legs are a very good addition, smaller than 12, maybe 14, anything smaller than 14, the rubber legs, just even the micro rubber legs, they just, they're so uh, weak. They, they don't last long. Um, you know, you can stick with the, the traditional palette of this fly in that brownish tannish color range. You know, use silly legs, round rubber, whatever you want. Um, 
these are all pumpkin or brown colored. Um, you can also go a little bit more on the olive side. That works well as well. Um, I'm a big fan of this yellowish olive here. It, it looks olive. It's actually a yellow color. That looks really sexy with them. And I've lately been playing a lot with these Chacon's uh, Bard Crusher legs. And this color, the, the sand and clear, is super good with it. Um, but today we're going to be doing a orange and black Bard with some orange flake in it just because it's what I want to fish with. So uh, let's get started. So first thing, I'm not, I don't rough the hooks on these hannocks. Um, I know Mr. Whitlock always you know, scratches the hook shank and then uh, applies the, uh, his Zappa Gap to do a better seal. And that seal does work very, very well, but we're not going to do that today. All right. And then, uh, first thing we're going to do is we actually tie in a small piece of crystal, or a flashaboo. And I'll show you what we do with it. Get back here to the bend. And we go down about three or four turns down the bend and back up and you'll see that gives it a real nice little little flash in the natural or when, when we're done tying it I do trim that out lay all that down come back to where I'm going to tie in my tail which is right there and then I'll take and I'll hit this thing right here, this whole thing with a drop of Dave's Flexament. You can't tie a Dave Whitlock fly and use anything but Flexament, in my opinion, or unless you're using Zap. Um, so we're going to use a little bit of back, uh, Fox Squirrel back for this. Let's come in, trim a little tuft. That's way too much. But uh, there's a few of these really long guard hairs. You come in, you pull those out. And all I do is come in and grab this part here. That's getting closer to the right amount. I don't throw this out. I kind of set it in the corner of my, my dubbing box, and then I have kind of stuff to start with the next time I dub or make a dubbing blend. Had a few longer guard hairs. Um, this tail, you can make it thick if you're doing something like a stonefly. Um, this instance, I'm just going for a generic mayfly nymph, so I'm not going to go with it. Terribly thick, but that's looking about right. For you. you want it to be about the length of the shank. Transfer, do one pin trap, maybe a second. Tie all that down nice and tight. Come back. Now, with these barbless hooks, you got you have to know that there's no barb to start with. So you kind of got to know where that hook starts to bend down. If I were to go, you know, one or two more turns, you can see I've, I've, I've curled that down. So undo those two, and it's coming out straight out the back. That, that's a rather full tail, but I'm what I'm looking for this to be is a, a full-bodied nymph for a, a small, small mouth and gills on some local rivers here. So we tie that flash boo back in now, and I want to get it to the far side. Set everything with a drop of the... Flex them in here, let it soak into that stuff. Then we're going to take some of this thorax dubbing. And I'll tell you, anything about it a size 14 and smaller, I just dub it right onto the thread. Anything bigger than that, and I, I actually do do Dave's technique where he just takes this clump and dubs out of the clump. Um, I'll show you guys that. So that's soaked in. I'm going to add another touch of flexment. Um, so... You take way more dubbing than you need, but that's okay. You kind of stretch it out a little bit. And just give it a start. That's it right there. Slide it up. We're just going to wrap. And every time we wrap, we're, we're letting a little bit of thread and a little bit of the dubbing out. But it makes a nice shaggy body. And a rather thick body as well. When, we, when we're done, we just pull it off. There. Now, when we wrap this flashaboo, we're going to counter wrap it backwards. So, uh, different than the way we just did the, the dubbing. But what that does is it kind of makes this stand out on top of it. 
and it helps to wrap down some of those loose, extra loose fibers. Um, wrap all the way back, get that nice and good. You see it's a little spiky, that's looking good. Hit that with a drop of Flexament. All right, then we gotta do the, the thorax here. So this is one where I, I, I would, I've come up with a, a different technique. Dave's technique works great here, but I, I've gotta do a lot here. I'm gonna put rubber legs and I'm also gonna do a, a small soft tackle. Um, so for that, I've, I've gotta, you know, be able to place this exactly where I need it because I need space, right? So, so that's about it, two inches. And then I just take some more dubbing and I very, very loosely, and a lot of this is gonna fall off, but I want that bulk and I want those guard hairs there. I'm gonna pick a lot of this out. But I've got the bulk I'm looking for. Come forward, all right. All these extra, this extra stuff here, I can come and the stuff that's super loose, but I've got a nice shaggy thorax there. And I've got a little bit of space, not a lot, but a little. Uh, we gotta do the rubber leg first. So take one, just trim it in half. And take it, wrap it around your thread, pull it up onto the side. There we go. That's one V. Do the same thing on this side. Come in front of those. Got a nice V there. You can see they're both working. They're way too long right now, but that's okay. I can trim a little bit, make it a little bit easier to tie. Then I take this hen saddle that I've got. I've already trimmed, cleaned it a little bit. And we pull it into this shape. Now, if you guys look, these fibers right here are just a little bit shorter than this, so that's not that's not what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the longer ones. That's all I need right there. And I'm only looking for one, essentially one full turn. I only want six, eight, maximum 10 fibers. So what I'm gonna do is, is actually strip all of these from the one side as well. So as you can see, I've only got the one side now. Cut that little triangle to tie on. I tie it right on at the back, on the top. Grab the pliers here. And what I do is, is I, uh, Ooh, something happened. I caught one of the rubber legs. Ooh, and I just pulled that feather out. So let's do that again.
doing just one turn of the tackle is all we're looking for all the way around, which should give us, like I said, six, eight, ten fibers. I don't want a lot. A lot of people rep do soft tackles with way too many fibers. Yeah, that's looking good. That's even maybe too many, technically. A little bit of a hot spot there with this orange thread. We'll just do a hand whip finish. That's a good looking fly right now. All right, let's trim these legs to the same length. Hold them up here. Now they're equal on both sides. Yeah. Yeah. Hit all of this with a drop of flex cement. Around those, all the way around. Let that soak in. And then you can take a little toothbrush or something, rough this thing up just a little bit. Makes it quite a bit more buggy. And that's a, those are still a little on the big side. And that's a closet, or a Whitlock Fox Squirrel Mayfly Nymph. Little soft tackle, little rubber leg action. You know, if you don't like the rubber legs, don't put them on there. Um, if you don't want a tail, you don't have to do a tail. We're gonna do the same fly, but we're gonna do it as a caddis version now. Just so you guys can see how you can make the same fly very versatile. Um, North Coast Dreamer, swing or tight line nymph when targeting bass and bluegill. Um, I do a technique called, I don't wanna call it swinging, but it's called the Brooks swinging method. Um, so what it is is, uh, let's say you're standing in a river and there's current in, there's water to, you know, I'm fishing on my right and there's water to my right that's uh, three to six feet deep. And I can't wade out and it's too deep, but there's fish out there. So what I do is I cast 20 feet or 10 or 15 feet above that, give the fly that 10 feet to drift. And then I basically am high sticking right next to me. Um, it's almost Euro nymphing, um, you know, in today's modern nomenclature, but Joe, uh, Joe Brooks was doing it in the 50s. Um, and I know uh, Harry Murray talks about it a ton as well. Um, it's super effective. Um, so it's called the swinging, swing nymphing, um, but it's, it's almost European style nymphing. The only difference is we're not going with, you know, six or eight feet of 4X or 5X to the fly to help it get down. I mean, we might catch a, you know, 15 or 20 inch smallmouth you got to have at least three X when you do that. Um, so that's the, now I might have four feet of three X as my tippet though, but, um, and then I, you know, I will, um, do it under an indicator as well. Uh, if I'm trout fishing, um, you know, I have no problem fishing this dead drift under an indicator. So we're going to do the, the caddis this time. Same thing, go down three or four times around the bend of the hook, just a little bit, come back up. I'll show you guys what that does um, to the to the body of the why we did that for the last one here real quick. Trim that off. So you can't see it. You may or may not be able to see it, but there's a little bit of flash in that right at where that tail is. And it's when it gets wet, it's a little bit more noticeable. But it's it's a super sexy little thing that uh, that he that. Dave Dud figured out and did, and I'm thankful he did. So, uh, so we're doing a caddis. This has no tail. So we go right into the abdomen dubbing. We'll do uh, yeah. Got to tie this back in just to get it going in the right direction. Again, I want it on the far side of the hook. Drop a flex a minute or two. Try to get it on those uh, that flashaboo flash there. You'll see the uh, flashaboo effect on this one, obviously, quite.
quite a bit better. Same thing, get it started around that dubbing, the thread. Whoopsie. Gives you a really shaggy body, but when we do that counter wrap, that shag kind of goes away. You can do this with a soft tackle. You can do this with rubber legs as well. You know, the nice thing is with this fly, you can really play around. If you go to Dave Whit Whitlock's website, which is DaveWhitlock.com, he's got a little paper he wrote about this nymph and this whole series. And it's got a picture of, I don't know, six, seven, eight different variations on his site of how he ties this from it, a stone fly to a damsel to, you know, a soft tackle, bead head, uh, you know, like a super micro version, looks to be like an 18 or a 20. Um, so you kind of, you can kind of see where he, where you can take this fly and how it can go into so many different variations. There again, about two inches of dubbing. Come back in here with some loose dubbing to give it a little bit of a shaggy thorax very loosely dubbed on here and again i'm going to pick off the extra that's looking a little pull all this stuff back i don't want to quite necessarily do a hot spot, but I want to get a little bit of a thread build up there. Start with a three turn whip finish, followed by a four or five turn whip finish. Hit this with some fleximin again, all the way around. And the same thing, take a little toothbrush and shagify it, hit it good, sweep all that back and, and then you can see how that little flash back there is real nice. Just a little bit of sparkle back here, try to get it back in focus. So you guys can see this flash right back here is real nice. But super effective little nymph. Um, next we're gonna do a Latorte Hopper. And I forgot to get the dubbing out for that. Where's my dubbings? So, um, Latorte hoppers are, you know, as simple as they get in terms of hopper patterns, but I will say I don't like them uh, much above about a size 10. Anything bigger than a size 10 and they just don't work. Um, so, um, and you can, I do use uni thread here. Um, and uh, typically I do it with a light Cahill color, six out light Cahill, just because I, I am working with deer hair. If you want to use GSP, you could. 30 or 50, uh, 30 or 50 would be plenty strong enough. Um, I just don't, you know, I work a lot with deer hair, so I don't necessarily need much help uh, trying to uh, spin deer hair like that. Um, today we'll do a size 12, maybe. Now let's do a size 14. I'm looking to do one specific thing here. Um, 
So you can tie it on a standard length dry fly, or you can tie it on something like the 5212 here, which is a 2X long dry fly hook. Um, it's your choice. Um, personal preference, there is no right or wrong way to uh, do it. Um, but I do like the, uh, the fine wire hooks instead of uh, doing on this on like a 9672 or something like that. Um, you know, if I was tying size eights and ten or eights and bigger, then yeah, the nine six seven two is fine because you typically have foam or a crap load of deer hair at the front of it. Um, but we're gonna do a fourteen here today, because um, like I said, but I want a little bit longer body to it, so that's why I'm doing it that way. So where you start your thread, you will not go past that with any material. That is the beginning of your head, and you will leave it. Completely alone, untouched, no matter what. Let's do a nice solid thread base. All right. Um, most of you guys know I like the, the dubbing from the Delaware River Club. Uh, this is their apple green. Um, I found it just looks really, really sexy for hoppers. It's kind of got that yellowish green color to it um, that a lot of hoppers have out in the driftless. A lot of them are green. I'll also do pink ones out there as well. I do do pink dubbing. Um, it is super effective as well. Uh, there are some days when pink is just the color for a dry fly out there. So let's get this. I want the first turn of dubbing right at the, the barb. And I kind of want it pretty big and bulbous right there. I don't, I'm not looking for a real thin tapered body. Yeah, there we go. Get that back in focus again. See if this works for you guys. Yeah. Keep dubbing as we go. I do want a little bit of bulk right there at the front. I want to increase my bulk just a tiny bit, as you can see there. See, that might be just the right amount. If there's any longer fibers, you can just come in and trim them. We're not looking for a spiky dubbing here at all. Yeah, there we go. That's looking good. Hit the beginning of that with a drop of flex cement. All right. Next, we've got a uh, turkey, pretty standard model Ozark. Um, and I've already treated this section right here with Dave flex Dave's flex cement and let it dry. So. Got about this part right here. You guys can't really see it, but I can. Um, all we're gonna do is go in and cut about, say a good, a piece about twice the hook gap. And pull it out. So there we go, it's about twice the hook gap. And all we do is bend it in half. Fold it in half just like that. And you'll feel there's a stiff part where, where you know, we're attached to the, the quill. And here it starts getting flexible. That's where we want to tie it in. We want the flexible part back out here over as a wing. And it's the same as the uh, cricket. Trim it flat. Cut that corner on a 45. Cut that corner on a 45. And there's our wing. Wing shape, looking good. All right. Right there, just a hair longer than the body, slightly towards me. 
that one or two, th three wraps, and I've rolled it to the dead top of the fly there. See that? Come underneath it three or four times. You can get those good and tight. Hit it with a drop of Flex Cement. Next, we've got some deer hair. You want to use uh, something like X Caddis hair. I've got these big pieces that I my dad hunts, so I get when I find a a good deer that he has, I'll I'll trim off what I need. Um, I've already got it in the some trimmed in, in the stacker, and they all came out beautifully even. I don't want that on my Latorts ever. Um, so I'm going to take and pull individual fibers to where it's uneven. See that? I've kind of got uneven tips. That's what I'm looking for. I don't want a nice square even. This isn't a, you know, in size eights and sixes and four size, size four hoppers, you can do that nice even thing. On these little ones, this is what gives it the uh, the natural variation. So I want these tips to be just about as long as the, the tail or the wing here. Come in here, measure. And I'm gonna come in and trim those. This right here flat. Yep, that's looking good. Nope, don't like that. I'm going to do that again. Don't be afraid, guys. If, if you get into a fly like that and you don't like something, undo it. Might as well make it right. Don't get done with it and go, I don't like that. All right, there we go. We're gonna have to do this in two steps because this stuff is so fine. It doesn't have any flare left in it. So there's my wing. Hit that with a drop of flex cement. Now I'm gonna have to spin a little bit of deer hair in front of there. Because I wasn't, I didn't, if you look, there's no uh, hollowness to it. That's all tip. <sighs> Not gonna lie, size. I'm out of my good hair for uh X caddis, I just got some in or on order. So So I've trimmed it down. I've got some good stuff here. go.
out the flexman again. And we need a razor blade. Guys, I don't know if any of you guys use uh, straight razors, but I found that I can get these straight razor blades. That was a $5 package, and there's 100 blades in it. And they're as sharp, if not sharp, they're honestly sharper than the old double edges that we could get from Walmart or whatever. So um, use whatever you want, but this is what I've learned to use now. So I'm just coming in, trimming off these uh, stacked ones that I have in here. You don't want this to be a, you know, a horribly tightly packed head either. The whole point of this fly is that it uh, lands a little bit softer than something like a bullet head. There we go. It's a little Latour hopper. You want a very sparse wing to it. You don't want a terribly densely packed head. That's as dense as it needs to get right there. That wing should be just barely visible. Oh, missed one fiber right there. And then from underneath, you can see, you can see the belly, you can see the wing. That's it. It's a super simple fly. It's very impressionistic. It's just like the cricket, except it's tied in a different color. Um, and again, anything above about a size 10, it, it starts to fall apart. It doesn't work very well. Um, it's a small hopper, which is in the driftless. Gosh, I would fish a size, you know, I would start with a 14, go to a 12 and stop at a 10, but I wouldn't get to the 10 until August. Um, when I'd start seeing some hoppers there that were an inch and a half, two inches long, and then I'd go to like to an eight. I never fished a, a six or a four there ever. There just weren't that many, that many big hoppers. Um, so you guys have any questions, uh, email me. Again, go to DaveWhitlock.com. He's got an article on Red Fox Squirrel Nymphs there. Um, and uh, you guys, if you have any questions, you can email me at alan at flyonthewater.com. And hope to see you guys soon. Bye.